Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Moto Gamepad mod for their Z series phones and what this does is it adds a game playing capability to your phone. Now of course these phones can play games already but when you attach this device to it you get a pretty decent little gamepad here with some thumbsticks that click along with a d-pad and all the game controls that you might want in a modern game and it has a booster battery built in too to give you a little more battery life on your phone while you're using it. We're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Motorola along with the uh, Z2 Force phone we have inside of it right now. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, Best Buy is selling this for about $59 right now and I think that is a sale price. It looks like the normal price is probably closer to $80 or so. This is only compatible with Motorola phones that support this Moto Mod infrastructure here. So I think it's the Moto Z phone as well as the new Z2 Force. Uh, any phone from Motorola that has these little pogo plugs on the back uh, will work with this. And all you have to do is just get it uh, attached to the uh, game controller mod here and that is it. It will automatically detect the controller, install whatever it needs to install, and it will begin uh, working with your Android apps. It also keeps the phone in here pretty securely. It really doesn't uh, jump out uh, accidentally. It's a pretty decent magnet. Uh, what I found the best way to get the phone out is to just uh, push on the camera here on the back and that will uh, pop the phone out so you can uh, detach it from the game controller here. Not too bad on that front. There is a battery built in. It's 1,035 milliamp hours, a little less than half of the battery built into the Z2 Force. So it will uh, give you a good uh, bump in battery life if you are uh, playing a bunch of games on it, which, which can be helpful. Now it does of course cover up the USB Type-C port for charging here at the bottom. So uh, they added a USB Type-C port here that charges both the uh, dock as well as the phone simultaneously. Uh, you also have a headphone jack here which is lacking uh, on the phone itself. So there is a feature added here to uh, get yourself some regular headphones that you can plug into that jack right there. The controls aren't bad. I like the thumbsticks here. They are pretty sensitive. We'll explore a couple of games with these in a few minutes. Uh, the D-pad here has a little too much travel for my liking, but it is pretty springy and responsive. But I would have liked for it to have a little less travel than it does, but I think it's something I could get used to. There's a home button here for going back home. They've also got a spot here where you can attach a strap or something for carrying it around. But I would be careful just because the phone doesn't come out easily, but a good knock might uh, detach the phone if you're swinging it around from a strap or something like that. On the other side, you got a bunch of buttons here. They're a little smaller than what you might see on a typical game controller, but uh, not out of the ordinary for a mobile device. Pretty springy and responsive. Uh, decent travel on these two. Not too bad there. Select and start button and you've got another uh, thumbstick over here. My big gripe though are the shoulder and trigger buttons. They are uh, there's actually two buttons on the top here. Maybe hard to see. So this button is your shoulder button and then there's a trigger button below it and it's really hard to differentiate the two. There is a bit of a uh, plastic canyon here between uh, the buttons but it really is hard in the midst of a uh, heavy duty game playing session to really get a good feel for which button you are about to push. So that was my only big gripe was just how close these two buttons are from each other. It might have been better just to make this case a little thicker to give it a little bit more distance between the shoulder button uh, and the trigger button on top there. So that was my uh, big gripe with it. But overall that is the hardware. So let's take a look now and see how this controller works in action. We've got a couple of native Android games we're going to check out along with some emulators too. So let's take a closer look. And one of the things that impressed me with the Motorola Z2 Force phone when I reviewed it a few weeks ago uh, was that it really handled things like the Dolphin emulator quite well. In fact, this was probably some of the best performance I have seen uh, on the Dolphin emulator to date. And uh, having a real control pad here really helps, especially having these sticks to uh, simulate what it was like to play these games back in the day. I was really pretty pleased with uh, how this all worked together here. And it was very easy to configure the controls. This shows up like a regular Android game controller, so you can map it to whatever uh, control you want no matter which emulator you're using so it really is just a, a standard Android controller that uh, happens to have some nice control sticks and nice integration with the phone. So here's a native Android game that supports the thumbsticks. This is something called Goat Simulator where you're a goat that runs around and destroys things. Uh, the th right thumbstick here can control the camera and if I just do it very slightly here you can see I can do a very slow pan of the camera and if I move it all the way over to the right here it goes very quickly but these thumbsticks are very sensitive and I don't see any way to adjust that sensitivity uh, in the control panel that you can pull down for the Moto Mod here. So that might be something in a firmware update 
I would like to see just to be able to control these thumbsticks a little better. But by and large, it seems to be uh, working pretty well with the games that support it. And as you saw uh, with the emulator, we are able to map controls when we need to. And I found a bunch of Android games that uh, didn't work with this initially, but they did have game controller support. And when I went in and mapped the controls like we just did with that GameCube emulator, I was able to get it to work. But uh, you may want to poke around in the app that Motorola provides for this uh, game controller mod to see what is directly compatible with it. So let's move on now to one of my favorite topics, which is input lag. In other words, how long does it take for a button push to register on screen here? Now, uh, I always like to look at retro games for this because they rely on very precise timing on the part of the player. And if your input lag is a problem, you're going to not play as well. So you can see here I'm jumping uh, with Sonic the Hedgehog, and there's a bit of a noticeable delay that I'm picking up here as I push that button. He's not reacting immediately. Now, one of the cool things about this controller is that it has lights here that light up when I do push the button. So we've got uh, two measurement points here. And the way I measure input lag is I take out my iPhone, which shoots at 240 frames per second, and I measure how many frames it takes for something to happen after the button is pushed. So let's pull up the file that I shot a little earlier with this game, and let's see exactly how long it takes for Sonic the Hedgehog to jump. So let's step through an example of the footage I shot here. You can see my thumb going down on the button there, and then that light will come on pretty quickly here. I am stepping through very quickly right now, but look how long it takes for Sonic the Hedgehog to actually react to that button push uh, after the light came on. It really does take a while uh, for there to be a reaction here. And this is not unique uh, to this device. In fact, this is something I've seen on uh, just about every Android phone and game controller I have tested, including ones that plug into the USB. For whatever reason, uh, Android just introduces a ton of input lag here, as you can see, that uh, really takes a while to get registered on screen with the games that you're playing here. So that light comes on, and then we're still waiting for Sonic to uh, jump shortly thereafter. So in my testing, I'm seeing about a 140 millisecond delay between the time the button is pushed and when something happens on screen. Not only with the Sonic the Hedgehog game, but also with a few game controller testing applications I ran too. Now the light comes on a lot quicker as you saw. Uh, that one's usually coming on in about 30 or 44 milliseconds, and uh, that is pretty darn quick. So the hardware here is certainly working as it's intended to work, but something's happening inside the phone that is really uh, bogging down that signal getting over to the game that you're playing. And uh, this is an issue, especially if you are a retro gaming fan, because because those games, of course, uh, did not have input lag as a real issue back when they were created. And uh, if you feel like you're not playing that game as well as you used to, it may not be your skill has declined. It might just be that uh, you're getting input lag that you were not used to uh, when you first started playing that game back in the day. So this is still a problem on Android. I'm not seeing any improvements here. Uh, in fairness, it's not any better on iOS either, uh, but it is something to keep in mind. This does not seem to improve the input lag problem we've seen on other Android devices. So that's going to do it for the Moto Mod game controller. I really like the hardware quite a bit. It really integrates quite nicely with the phone here. I like that it also has a battery built in and even gets you the headphone jack that was missing on the uh, phone originally. It even lights up here in the back, which is pretty cool with that Lenovo gaming logo because Lenovo, of course, owns Motorola now. Uh, but my big gripe, though, comes back to that latency issue. I was hoping some dedicated hardware here might give us a better experience with input lag on Android, but unfortunately, that is not the case. You're also going to I uh, experienced some of that lag on here, uh, even though you are using a hardwired and dedicated device for the task. So hopefully that might be something that can be approved down the road, but uh, right now I'm not seeing any better input uh, latency scores on this one than we did on other game controllers we have looked at here on the channel. This is Lon Seidman, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller, and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.